Hey guys, it's Lee, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Sony a6700 um, and just talk to you guys a little bit about what my initial thoughts are on this camera and kind of who is this camera for and maybe some pros and cons and things like that. Um, I do have a more in-depth review that's going to be coming out in a couple weeks or so, um, but for now, I just want to kind of give you guys what my initial thoughts were on this camera and just kind of go from there. So just to kind of just talk about what it actually looks like, what this camera actually looks like. I mean, I think it's a beautiful camera, right? I mean, you know, that's just me. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful camera. But one of the things that I did notice right away about this camera is that it's definitely a little bit larger than some of the other A6000 A6, series cameras. Um, and that's not a really a bad thing, but I do recognize that it is a little bit larger. I'm actually someone who's coming from the A6400 to the, the A6700, so I definitely noticed that difference. One of the other things that I noticed right off the bat about this as well is definitely the grip is definitely improved. It's a deeper grip. It's a little bit more comfortable than A6400 too, which is great. But I think this is going to lend itself really well to maybe using some, you know, bigger or heavier, longer lenses. It's going to feel more balanced in your hand, which is something that I, I really like. Um, something else that really jumped out to me as being something that I was actually a little bit surprised to see, but it is this, this dial. And they added this on here, which I think is phenomenal. And this is actually something that I've only really seen in your A7 series cameras. And so I think it's really cool that they added that here in the A6700. Now, some of the other things that I noticed that were different, and by the way, the things that jump out to me may be a little bit different for you because I'm used to looking at the A6400. They do have the, this nice little sort of, you know, way to select if you want photo, video, or SQ, which is really cool. Um, I thought that was really nice that they have that on here now as well. There's a dedicated record button, which is nice. And then there are actually a few, um, you know, custom buttons as well. One of the other big changes is this flip out screen. We do have this nice flip out screen as well. And I think that's really cool, especially if you are somebody who is into, you know, doing some video or you want to vlog or maybe you want to take some self portraits. You're going to actually be able to see yourself in this camera pretty easily and flip the screen out. And I think that's really cool. Um, so those are some of the main things that really jumped out to me as well. But if we kind of move on a little bit to things that maybe you can't necessarily see, um, when we talk about specs for this camera, right? Inside of this camera, you're gonna have a 26 megapixel BSI CMOS APS-C sensor, okay? And you also get that new Bions XR processor. And, and get this, there is also a dedicated processor um, that is really just designed to only process that sort of AI capabilities that are baked into this camera. And I think that's really cool. You also get autofocus tracking uh, with subject recognition. You get 759 autofocus points as well. 93% coverage there. And then nothing to really, you know, it's not really super mind blowing, but you get 11 frames per second when shooting with your mechanical or electronic shutter, which is also pretty nice. You get the option of actually using lossless or compressed raw. And you know, you always got to shoot in raw, so <laughs> make sure you're doing that. But you do get those options as well. You do also get HEIF and HLG still image modes, which is cool. You can also shoot 4K up to 60P. And one of the other cool things is that this is actually downsampled from 6K down to 4K. And I think that's actually really cool. And that means that you're going to get a nicer, crispier, more beautiful video. And you also have the capability of shooting 120P and 4K mode. But there is a caveat, and that's that it's going to crop in 1.58 times, um, which is going to be, you know, I guess, depending on what lenses you're using, that could be something that might trouble you a little bit, but it's just something that kind of comes with it, right? Now, you also get 10-bit video and 422 color or 420 color. You also have access to S-Cinetone, S-Log3, and HLG profiles, and you also can upload your own custom LUT. Not to mention, you also get in-body image stabilization as well. And if I think about the A6400, you don't get that with that camera, and I think that's really phenomenal that you get that in this one. So that's something else that I really like about this camera as well. You know, but when you think about it, like who's this camera really gonna be for, right? I think this camera is gonna be really good for your sort of enthusiast photographer, right? Somebody who's really into photography, somebody who 
is maybe taking some paid clients, somebody who maybe travels a lot and they want to bring their camera with them. This is going to be a great camera for that. Um, and then also this can be for someone who do all the things I just talked about, but also maybe they're dabbling into getting paid clients, but they want a reliable camera, something that's going to take really good photos. It's going to be a powerful camera. It's going to last. I think this is also going to be a great camera for somebody like that as well. This is also going to be great for somebody else who's looking to upgrade from their sort of older APS-C Sony camera as well, right? So for instance, if you already have like the A6400 or A6000 or something like that, and you're looking to get that latest and greatest technology, you're gonna find all that and more in this A6700. This is also gonna be a really great camera for somebody who is really into sort of that hybrid world, right? Somebody who likes to take a lot of video, somebody who likes to take a lot of photo, this is gonna be great for that, especially when we talked about the whole 4K capabilities of this camera, the S-Log, all of that packed into this camera is gonna be really great. Not to mention the in-body stabilization as well when it comes down to video. You're gonna have a lot of options when it comes down to this camera. And so this is gonna be great for anybody who is just hybrid. One of the other cool things about this camera and who I also think it's gonna be great for is you know, somebody who is really into photography, but they don't necessarily want to jump into the full frame world because at the price point, this is about $1,400. If you really were just itching to jump into the full frame world, you could go and get a used camera from somewhere like MPB or something like that. And, you know, just jump into the full frame world and go from there and just focus on buying good glass and things like that. But one of the other great things that I think some people don't think about all the time when it comes down to this camera or any APS-C lineup is just really when it comes down to the lenses that you have the option to, to get. With the APS-C um, camera, these lenses are far less expensive than what you'll find on a full frame camera. And I think you're gonna be able to get more bang for your buck if you're somebody who is more, like I said, more of an enthusiast and you want to take a lot of pictures, you want you know great lenses and things like that. You can do all that with this A6700 and again, like have access to those third party lenses like made from like Sigma or Tamron or Samyang. So for instance, on this camera, I'm actually using the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4 DCDN lens. And this is a phenomenal lens. It's actually sort of the equivalent to maybe having like a 50 millimeter lens on this body. So, you know, you have to really think about kind of what you're getting into when you think about this APS-C camera versus, you know, something like, a, you know, A7R4 or A7 IV some of the newer cameras um, and kind of think about where you stand and kind of how you're going to actually be using this camera. So those are my thoughts. I think that this is, is a really versatile hybrid camera. I think it's a beast when you look at all the specs and when you think about what this camera can do, this is a great camera. So I want to hear from you guys as well. How are you going to use this camera? Are you thinking about getting this camera? If so, are you new to photography? Are you trying to upgrade? Like, let me know a little bit in the description box below kind of what you guys are thinking when it comes down to the A6700. Also, if you're new here, um, we just hit 300 subscribers. Um, so I'm really excited that you're watching this video. And if you haven't already, I definitely hit the subscribe button so they can be alerted every time I have a new video. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. And really, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button because it just motivates me to continue making more videos. This is a new channel. And, you know, if you know anything about YouTube, you need a lot of motiva motivation when you're just getting started because it can take a while to kind of get that traction. But I definitely appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions or you want to share anything, definitely leave those in the comments below for me. Also, before you go, make sure you check out one of these videos here. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.